Enjoy the Goldilocks Productions presentation of the In the Psychic Flow Show with Carolyn Carey. Well, good evening, everyone. How are you doing today? Thank you for tuning in to In the Psychic Flow. My name is Carol Ann. I am the psychic medium of Sarasota, or SRQ as we refer to it. And my website is carolannecarey.com. Carol Ann is C-A-R-O-L-A-N. Carey is C-A-R-E-Y dot com. I hope you will check it out. If you're interested in scheduling a reading in person in Sarasota or long distance, Spirit Knows No Bounds. My calls are international. I have clients in Canada, Vietnam, Brazil, and a few other places, the U.K. So thank you very much for all of your support, and I would be glad to schedule something for you. So no matter where you live, it's not a problem. Tonight, you have me. So I have some callers queued up. That is fabulous. Um, We've had some very interesting guests, and we have some more interesting guests coming up in the end of October and September. Tonight, we're going to take your questions, do a little psychic chit-chat, do some mini readings. Uh, If you are on hold, please press 1 so that we can hear you. I hope some more people call in. Uh, What else can I say to you? I really wanted to talk a little bit about, I have a class coming up in September at Sarasota Center of Light. I'm doing a talk there this Sunday night at 7, so if you're in the area, please drop in. I'm doing a talk and messages there. I think that is the 16th or something like that. Sorry. Uh, This Sunday, in any event. And on September 13th, which is a Friday, Friday the 13th, At the Learning Center, I will be doing a class on how and why we talk to the dead, mediumship, how and why we do it. So I hope you will join me for that. I'd like to do an explanation for the public to understand how mediums connect, or at least how this one connects, and why I do what I do, which is my sole purpose, is to talk to your departed loved ones. I've had some very interesting readings lately uh, in person here in Sarasota. It's been very interesting. I've learned a lot. And uh, if we have time, I'll share some of that with you. So, anyway, so let's get the ball rolling here. I have a caller at area code 231. What's your name, please? <coughs> 231. Are you there, please? Yes. Hi, my name is Kia. Hi, how are you? I'm okay. Thank you for taking my call. Sure. What can we help you with tonight? Um, I'm just wondering if there's any message from my dad um, in spirit for me regarding my current situation. Hmm. Let's see. Dad. Definitely around you. Definitely here. Um, I feel as if... Sorry, I had to move that little ratty dog um is there something in the did he pass from something in the chest because i feel very heavy i feel like i'm having trouble breathing okay uh that's the impression that it gives me i feel like um i want to say uh handsome i feel like a dapper individual i don't know if he dressed all the time he didn't have to be dressed per se but I feel like he would straighten his collar out, comb his hair. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think he was um, – he says he's he's being called neat as a pin, so I don't know who's saying that. But uh, let me see what Dad has to say. First of all, um, he says something – he gives me the word resolve. So I feel that this situation that you were in, and I feel like it's – both financial and relationship oriented. Would that be correct? Yes, ma'am. Yes, definitely. Uh, okay. He says this situation is going to be resolved. Um, he is, I want to let you know that your dad says, I feel like I left too soon, and I think you would agree with that. 
Um, but he said, my passing was, the word he uses is swift. Uh, it's, it's like the wind. It was as, as fast as the wind. So I didn't have to linger. I wasn't uncomfortable. Uh, he talks about grandma, so I am assuming he is talking about, I'm assuming, I could be incorrect, that this is his mother that has passed. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so he was met by his mother, which is your grandmother, and uh, some others as well. And he says, um, you are not alone. Uh, he is with you. I feel he's showing me a belt, too. Did he wear a belt? Yeah. Or something yeah. about a belt? Okay. I feel like, uh, so maybe he was the kind of guy who wore his shirt tucked in. I feel like you have to be, he's, he, and he's showing me his stomach. So I think his stomach may have been a little bigger or something than it should have been, or he had problems with his stomach. Um, that may be with uh, a chest condition or a respiratory condition. Um, he says to you, I just want to let you know that it was swift. I went to the other side very quickly. Um, I think he had lingered here. He felt I think the spirit world felt that he had lingered here long enough. Uh, you may not agree with that. I think he would have liked to have kept him longer, and he would have been liked to have been here longer. Uh, but he's like, I heard the call kind of thing. So I was welcomed. His mother was there. I feel that there's a brother or an uncle as well in spirit, with, or that he had an, a brother. Would that be correct? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay. Um, so those are the people, some of the people that greeted him. He talks about a large Indian chief as well. I don't know why that would be. I don't know if he had anything with uh, Native American culture, but he's talking about a large Indian chief here. This could be, um, in the philosophy that I studied in, this could be the uh, protector for you. Uh, okay. All right. That's usually a Native American. Whoops, sorry. Um, so he's calling to remind you that you have this protection around you, uh, which is this Native American, very nice, beautiful, older gentleman, big headdress. Um, so you have protection with you. I kind of also want to say to you this relationship, I feel as if he did not like it. Okay. Um I don't know if he told you that or not, but I feel like at this point I don't like it or something is not likable about it, all right? Uh, but he says it's going to be resolved. The month I get for you is January. I think things are looking better. Are you thinking of moving on or are you thinking of a new uh, job or something with money? Are you worried about uh, your finances? Yeah, I'm I'm currently job searching, and yes, I'm very worried about my finances, yeah. Okay. January 2020 is a better year for most of us, and that includes you as well. Um, I think pretty much for everybody. I would like to see something before that. He also signifies the month of September here, so that's just next month. Um, may I ask what industry you were associated with or what you're looking for? Um, right now, I'm looking for anything. Um, I've been uh, off work for five years from from cancer, and but I was in human resource sources prior to that. Okay. Uh, he gives you um, a pink rose for the cancer. Uh, being a survivor, he says you are a survivor. Um, You know, <clears throat> excuse me, I have two companies in front of me. I want to say two companies, uh, but I, I, I feel October might be either an interview or starting. You know how they do an orientation? Yeah. Um, so are you affiliated with any agencies or anything like that? Um, not yet, but I, I'm going to be applying through the temp agencies probably. Okay. Um, Good. I, I don't think you're going to have a problem, hon. So between, uh, I think they're going to they're going to grab you up. You know what I mean? 
I think they're going to be very happy. You have great skills and you have a nice personality. So um, I think that's going to contribute. I don't know how comfortable you are in the relationship. I don't know if it's money or it's not supportive. But um, I would probably worry about the finances first. Um, yeah. Uh, that is that's probably going to take care of a lot of things, and I feel as if you're not going to have a problem. Uh, so put on your best. He's saying put on your high heeled shoes. I don't know who's saying that. If that's him or his mother, but someone is saying to you, put on your high heeled shoes. Okay. Put that put that lipstick on, and get in there and show them what you got, um, <laughs> because you're a dynamo. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I think September, October, these are very good months for you. Uh, I think you're going to get assignments, and then what happened, I worked temps years ago, and it was a great way to find a permanent job. And it may work out for you better even working temps. Who knows? And the money's not bad. And then you get to pick and choose. You know, you kind of have an inside look at where you're working and whether you want to stay there or not. So I think it's a very good move for you. I don't think you're going to have okay. any problems. So lots of luck to you, Kia. You're going to do very well, and God bless. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're, you're welcome. Our next caller is uh, area code 860, and that is Amla. Hi, Amla. How are you? Good. How are you, Carol Ann? Oh, I'm doing great. Thanks. Thank you. Um. Yeah, I have a question. I think I called you maybe at the beginning of the summer. I'm not sure. Um, and since it's August, it's actually halfway done. I can't believe it. Um, just was wondering if you see me in a substantial relationship, a good one, a solid one. Um, a lot of changes in a good way this summer. I've, I've expanded. I've grown. I've evolved. So, yeah. Um, are you more active, active socially than you were at the beginning of the summer? Um, I, I'm sorry. Can you say that again? Let me rephrase that. Are you more socially active than you were in the beginning of the summer, like J- May, June? Um, are you? It's interesting um, that that you see that I've been really much indoors because I'm getting this book done. So, yeah, I now it's time. I feel it. I feel, I'm like. On edge, I, I'm so I'm dying to get outside, basically. So it's it's I feel it like this weekend is my weekend to go out, which I haven't really gone out at all this last summer, but it's for a good reason, of course. But um, yeah, I'm going to the beach. There's a drumming circle this weekend. Oh, good. I'm happy. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Let me talk to you about your book a moment, if I may. Sure. Sure. What is this? I don't want to pry. What is the subject matter about? What, oh, in, what, no, no. You're, you're more than welcome to ask. Um, I'm legally blind, and mm-hmm. I still have vision. I have um, tunnel vision, basically. It's like seeing through a kaleidoscope where I'm at right now. So I could still read, so to speak, physically, um, but my vision significantly decreased in April of this year. So I'm seeing through fog. And basically the book is based on – it's a memoir slash motivational book. There are 12 chapters, basically 12 stories of purpose. So something happens regarding most, most of the chapters are um, related to my vision and something happens. Um, I go through the emotions of it, and then I talk about the lessons that I've learned from that particular story. And then at the end, I have three exercises um, that people can – do in their lives it, like, that, that might enhance their lives based on topics, based on themes. So each chapter is a theme. Oh, that sounds very exciting. I think Thank you're going to you. do very well with that. Um, it's very courageous, I think, and very brave of you to do this. And Thank I think you. it's going to pay off for you. I feel as if um, once you emerge it, from this self-seclusion to finish this project, uh, yes. The fall feels a lot lighter. The, I, hopefully it'll stop raining down here and you can <laughs> get out. I mean, it's done nothing but rain all week. Um, I feel as if there you have a, an opportunity to meet at least two gentlemen. 
Okay. Maybe three. I think the third one is the ticket. Isn't that always the way? The third one is the charm. Yeah. Um, huh. And I feel is it's like a salsa dancing kind of feeling uh, okay. with this, and I kind of like that uh, sexy vibe. So I think yeah, the more that you are out and speaking about your what you've written and getting and pushing oh. that, um, if you get published shortly and you're pushing that book, yeah. you're going to meet a lot more interesting people that are interested in you and your story and your courage. So. I think it feels good. I would say by December, um, you're feeling a lot better and a lot more comfortable. And even if it isn't just the companion, there are companions, yeah. there are gentlemen in uh, around you. So I kind of like that. I have the the one thing that I do get is that salsa dancing, and I have a really nice neck. He has a very nice neck that you can nuzzle in, and he smells really good. That's, That's my impression. Person. So I, that. if I was, if it was me and I was in your situation, that's where I'd be going. I don't know, but the little salsa dancing wouldn't hurt you, you know. Oh yeah, that's so funny because actually there's this like hippy dippy. I'm into all that stuff. There's like this. Da- I'm not that I'm like self fulfilling prop. None of that stuff. But you know, there's a dance that I was just interested in in September, and um, it's a really great time. It just really is. And you did. I wanted to verify this. You said this the last time he smells really good. You said oh. that. So it must be true. And like, this is the second time you told me this. Oh, okay. So okay. Well, like, yeah. that's good then. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I think you'll you'll enjoy that sexy dancing. I think that'll be a lot of fun. <laughs> Do you feel like, um, like, my book launch party is at the beginning of October. Is that where you feel like? everything starts to just get lighter because that's... Yes, I feel, um, you know, writing a book is like crawling under a rock for a while, and it depends on how long. You know, it depends how how you do it, if you're able to do, yeah. attack it full-time or if you're wor- working in chapters, um, yeah. the little bit that I do and that I have done on mine. Um, it's... It, the release has to be tremendous, and from what I understand, it's like coming out of the dark and going into the light again. So yeah. I think October, there's a sunshine, thank God. We're going to have some sunshine. There's beach. Yeah. There's, uh, you know, I can see sand. I can see uh, between your toes. I feel that there is some romance going on, beautiful sunset. So uh, awesome. don't give up hope. Look for, keep pushing forward because I think you're going to do very well. I think you'll be a different person in October. Really? Oh, that's only yes. two months away. That's really right. thank you. And that's I feel you that the it. book is the book is going to give yeah. you much more confidence when that's ready to rock and roll. Um, yeah. You're going to feel a lot lighter. So good luck to you, Alma. Oh, Emma, thank sorry. you. I know. It, I really appreciate that. I, I'm already there. Like I'm on the peak, you know, the, a foot of the mountain, if you would. You know, kind of like oh, I'm looking up and I'm looking at the view now, which is kind of cool. Good. Very Good. Cool. So it's only a month away that the book will be out. So that's fabulous. You're going to do great. Thank you, Carolyn. Thank Enjoy. you. Enjoy. Thank you. You're welcome. Enjoy your evening. You too. You too. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. How's our next caller? Area code 904. Are you there, please? Hi, Carolyn. This is Patty. Hi. How are you? I'm good. Thanks. Good. What's going on? Well, I had uh, just wanted to check in and see. I talked to you a couple months ago, I think it was, and uh, work-related, and you had said that one position I was going for wasn't going to come through, which it didn't. And I found something else part-time, and it started in July, but it's so slow going. They keep telling me they're going to give me more work, and I, I just don't see it happening yet, so... I think it's just the way that they operate in the beginning. It's a pure agent job with the cruise ships. and So I just want to see if you see anything more coming from that. It's only part-time to begin with, 28 hours or so, or anything else that I should keep Oh, it'll looking. pick up by um, probably before Thanksgiving. Oh, I can't wait that long. I know, but um, <laughs> there might be another part-time job as well. Yeah, so I just don't wonder give if I should just keep looking. Yeah, don't give up hope. Um, what I get is, like, by Thanksgiving, you're going to get slammed. 
so enjoy it while you can. I do feel there's something else, uh, maybe something to do with property management or real estate or something, maybe reception. It's not great, but it's enough to, between the two of them, to give you some variety. And one of them, the second one is much more uh, laid back. You know, uh, you could pick your hours kind of thing. I think they need some some things done, maybe the phone's manned or some scheduling done, and I don't think that's going to be a problem for you. So I think right. it's like... Actually, somebody just told me about a company that sounds like that particular thing, that it's phone work, and you can pick your hours, and I wonder if that's the one. That we'll, I just spoke to them yesterday, a woman that's amazing. Oh, good. Was good. Telling me well, about, give it a shot, yeah. and it'll help feel it even out. I feel by February, you will be like, oh, my God, I can't believe how much I'm working. So give it into the new year because that, that's the peak period for cruising is like November through February, March, April, definitely through February. So you're looking at um, solids from like November to February. Right, but they only have you on four days a week at this terminal because that's the only amount of times that the cruise ships come and go on four days. Yeah, and it, that's it actually okay. alternates every other week. It's four days, three days, four days. Oh, okay. So you don't see them giving me any more work next month of September? I, I do believe you are. You're going to be very busy, but I don't think September. I think more yeah. the later fall. Yeah. So um, you may have to juggle a little bit, you know? Yeah, fill in with yeah. the other one, but um, I see dollar signs here, so don't give up hope, Patty, because I know it's not easy, and I know it's probably not what you want to hear, but um, by February, you're going to be like, oh, my God, I, I, I couldn't do another, you know, hour a week of this. It's too much, you know, so you will right. be busy, uh, I would say, November through February on that one yeah. job, on that tr- uh, that cruise thing. That's right. when they're busy. They're not busy right now. Yeah. Yeah. But um, I keep seeing dollar signs, so I feel. Is your mother passed away? Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. She. Uh, I feel like I want to say, feel like a mama bear with her. I feel that she's, or that she's inferring that you're like a mama bear. Um. Like anybody who's close to you, when she's showing me is an affection, either you have or she has. So uh, I'm not sure if she's just showing me this to. Give me your personality or her personality. Uh, she's not being very clear about that, but I know that she's here, and it's more like a mama bear feeling, like a hug feeling. And there's uh, may have been when she passed. Did she have sisters or other women in spirit for her? When yes, she her mother, and uh, I think uh, I think one of one or two of her sisters had okay. passed then before that, okay, she that's, did. That's what she's showing me then. Okay, I apologize. Now I get it. Mm-hmm. She passed over, and those three people were there for her, these women. And it's sort of like a group hug when she arrived, so they were glad to see her. Um, so they send a lot of uh, – they talk about your ambition. The word that I get with you is you're ambitious. It will pay off. I know it's not what you want to hear right now, but you know what? You got, You really do have a lot going for you. I know it doesn't feel like it. Um, you've taken some hard knocks, but you know what? You, you keep getting up. So that says a lot about your character, and they they are assuring me you're ambitious and that you will succeed. So um, don't give up hope. Okie dokie. I know. It's not easy to hear. Uh, what is that? Do we have a, a birthday coming up around February or, or is it Valentine's Day? I, I have a birthday in January. Oh, okay. Um, what was what's February? Friend of mine. Um, I have a woman friend. It's a February birthday. Oh, okay. Um, I think we, we want to say hello to her. Mm-hmm. Um, two thousand. She said you should celebrate New Year's because two thousand twenty. Like I see you with one of those T arrows on, and it says twenty twenty on the top. Those two, those mm-hmm. four numbers sticking up. She, this is your year. I know it's hard to believe, but every once in a while we get a good year, and you've had like a run of like five to seven that's not so great. Uh, I'm seeing 2020 going to be a lot better for you, okay? Yeah. Yeah. And do you have a cat spirit as well? Yes, I do, yeah. 
Okay, that cat is swirling around between when you're talking or you're standing or doing dishes. I feel like that cat is going in between your legs, and then I feel like I want to be up on the counter. Mm. Um, I don't know if he was allowed up in the counter when he was here, but he he or she is on the counter watching Mm. you. So Mm. I just want to let you know that that little friend of yours is over there keeping an eye on you, okay? Okay. (laughs) Okay, good luck to you, Patty. All right, thank you. Do you think You're the welcome. other job will start this, like next month? I can't really go too much longer. With, you know, some, I think it'll be, I, I get two weeks. I think it'll go. Yeah. They'll be like, yes, we'll take you right away. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a doctor appointment. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll take you right away. Uh, but it kind of feel that because it's a, fr- a referral kind of feeling, um, yeah. that they like that. Yeah. All righty, I'll check them out. Okay, good luck to you, Patty. All right, thank you, Carol. Have a good evening. You're welcome, God dear. God thank bless. Bye bye. It's not always, you know, I don't always get, um, I get your dead people, you know, your departed loved ones. And then I ask them, like, what's going on? You know, what, what can we say to this person? How do we give this person some encouragement and some hope? They will give me information because your loved ones are very aware of what's going on in your life. Uh, Love never dies, so they do stay in contact with you. They are not gone. They are just in a different place. They are not physically here, but they are here in spirit. We can talk to them, and when you learn to listen, um, it comes in quite differently. The way it comes in for me, it will be like – Almost like imagine that you have a projector screen or a a phone screen in front of you. And words will start sometimes texting across my screen. Like I'll get words or I'll get a word or I will get a picture or I will get the sensation. Uh, If you know your loved one, you obviously know them better than I do, you would be able to pick up on that feeling. So if you have that feeling of contact, explore that a little bit. Be open to it because they work very hard to maintain communication with us, and a lot of times we're just ignoring it or we doubt it. So give yourself a break and give them some credit for trying. And when you are asking something, be open to it. Um, The Spirit doesn't always give us the answers that we are looking for. They will give us an answer or the answer, or how it's going to be. Um, Have you ever tried to read tarot cards for yourself? Don't bother, because you will keep flipping the cards until you get what you want. I know, I've been there. The same thing with spirit communication. You'll be like, oh, no, they would never say that. Sometimes your guide is talking to you. Sometimes a loved one is talking to you. Take the time to try to establish that relationship and let me give you a little hint um a very famous medium uh shauna spaulding st Clair was a lilydale new york medium lilydale is a stork town it's totally filled with mediums it's outside of buffalo about eight hours in new york a huge contingency of mediums up there And she visited Sarasota and eventually moved here, and she passed away about almost two years now uh, after battling renal disease. But she was one of the best teachers, and I had the opportunity to study under her. And one of the first things she taught was to imagine yourself sit in a chair um, and get into some kind of relaxed, meditative state. You have to take a few breaths. Take a few breaths and just chill. Just relax. Don't force anything to happen. Don't feel that you failed. Don't, you know, don't put any kind of expectations on yourself. Just relax. Take some breaths. And imagine a glass tube of light. I say glass, but it could be plexiglass. Picture that like an elevator shaft, if you will, like a tube, like you've seen in uh, shopping malls or something where the elevator is in a glass tube. Picture a tube like that coming down from the heavens all the way down through you into the ground. So it's all light. And if you look very closely as you're sitting and you're encompassed by this tube, you'll see multifaceted colors in there, like lavenders and indigo and purples and 
yellows and gold and silver and opaque things and a shimmery light coming down from the heavens, encapsulating you all the way to the ground. Now, while you're sitting in this beautiful tube, imagine there's a chair across from you and that you're so close that if someone was sitting in it, your knees would almost be touching. So look at yourself. Take your deep breath. Picture someone who has passed in spirit, mom or dad or a friend or your spirit guide, whoever you want to speak to. Imagine that you are welcoming them. You're reaching out to the other side, up into the heavens, and say, is there someone that wants to meet with me for my, with the very best intention? Is there someone that would like to come forward and spend a moment or so with me? Give yourself that time. You may feel a touch on your hands. You may feel a breeze on your face or someone petting your hair or a breath. You might get a word. You might get a sentence. Um, When I did it, my second husband came in, and I thought I was imagining it, and then he touched my knee. And he was a vague outline, but I could feel the hand on my knee like I'm here. And I was shocked that this worked, I'll be honest with you. Um, But it did work, and it works for many people. It may be 30 seconds. It may be a couple of minutes. Don't linger there too long. Let them go when they're ready to go and say, I welcome you back at any time. And try this for a while. Make an appointment with yourself to try that. I do it instead of meditation. I'm not a good meditator. I'm better scrubbing a pot or walking the dog than I am at sitting in meditation. But I will sit and do this. So when you're ready to let go and that person goes and you say goodbye for now, um, come back when you're ready. When you're ready, if it's once a week or once a day to do this exercise again, they will come. So you establish a routine. And your visits will become longer and longer, and different people will come in. Don't make it too long because then you get too airy-fairy. And when you come out of this, and you're still in the tube, when you come out of this sensation of being united with a loved one, wiggle your toes and wiggle your fingers to bring you back into reality. Let the shaft of illuminated light go. Take a breath and picture yourself. Wake up and see yourself sitting in the chair, totally renewed, knowing that your loved one was in contact with you. So that's just a little exercise that I give to people to try out the spirit world and see what it feels like. I think you will get good results. Anyway, my next caller is area code 978. What is your name, please? Hi, Carolyn. It's Kathleen. I think I got a reading from you once. How are you? I'm good. Your voice sounds familiar. Oh, okay. Yeah, we only spoke once. I think it was maybe a few months ago. I don't know. But I have um, two specific questions, if I may. I'm going to a seminar next Tuesday to see about gastric bypass surgery. And I wanted to know if you see me going through with it, and if so, would it be successful? Um, let me say this. The procedure that you're looking at may not be the one the surgeon wants to do. Would it be the sleeve? Um, this is just a seminar to oh, find okay. out more about it. But I didn't know if you saw me going through with it some weight loss procedure, surgery. The sleeve is the one that is not usually recommended. Right. Um, Okay. I'm sorry. The bypass, yes. Uh, Are you talking maybe spring is a possibility? I think your audio is up. Your radio may be on or your stereo might be on or your laptop. No, I have nothing going. Oh, okay. It's echoing. Sorry. Maybe it's me. Let me see if it's me. Because I don't Probably hear an echo me. from you. Oh, okay. can hear it on here. Um, so you think I'd have the procedure in spring? 
I think once you go through the seminar, I think you will be very comfortable. I don't know if you're going to have that surgeon, but the surgeon that you do have, and there feels like a woman, a nutritionist, or a yeah, psychological initially that's what you see. person. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I think you will get along with that woman, and I think the surgeon that you will pick or has availability, I think you'll get along with. And so that's the biggest hurdle to me. Um, I think that you are a candidate, so but they are going to let you know right away. Yeah, I am a candidate because I gave them my weight and okay. this and that, and they tell you what your BMI is and everything and mm-hmm. or not you are. Um, so you do see me going through with it in the spring. Yes. And, would it be uh, and I say spring because we're going into fall now next month. To me, we're going into fall. Um, yeah, but I could be November. It all. could be March. Could be November. Could be February. March. For, it depends on this for this procedure because it depends on the schedule and getting the insurance. Okay. Okay. November, December, or March. Mm-hmm. Okay, and. Would there be any complications, like anything? Not if you follow directions. Okay, and do you see me losing a good amount? If you can stay with it, yes. Oh, do you see me staying with it? It's not an easy thing to that. It's not an easy thing to do. It's not the it's not the end all. You still have to work at it. You know, you still have yeah. to watch everything that goes in. Um. But it is successful uh, for you. It might be the incentive for you. Okay. And then I have another question. Um, I've been eyeing a second-hand car um, in Avalon, Toyota Avalon. The thing is, my credit, I do have a friend who said that he could help me with 4000 for a down payment, and um, and then I'd have to pay him, and then see if you know I'd qualify for a loan for the rest of it. Um, do you see that happening soon? It's a charcoal gray with a off white leather interior. Is it a two thousand nine? Eleven. What's the nine? Why do I get the month, the nine? Could that be September? Probably. Okay. But I I I would make arrangements now, and you right. could probably okay. hold it. The guy could, because it's a small lot. The thing that I've been seeing once you mentioned the car is underneath the car, between the exhaust and something else, the engine. I guess there's a pipe that runs from the engine to the exhaust. Something in there. Uh, there may be a leak, or there's a little concern. Might have to be fixed once they put it up on a um, lift. A lift uh, that may may be a leak. Uh, something that's what I'm being brought to. Is your father passed away? Yes. Okay. Then that's who's showing me this. Um, he says, I don't know how. I don't know if he know knew a lot about cars in his lifetime. I'm uh, pointing this out to me, and it looks like a T underneath the car. It's like there's pipes and things going underneath, and there's something like midway between the engine and the tailpipe. That's right there. So, uh, something, so I should have it checked out first. I would have somebody who knows what they're doing look at it. Yeah. So uh, you, there's also something. What color was that? Gray. Charcoal gray with off-white leather interior. Okay. The other vehicle I see is a small white vehicle. Now, I know an Avalon is like a sedan, right? Yeah, and I'm tall with long legs, so I feel it would be roomy. Yeah. Uh, This feels smaller, more compact. Doesn't mean you won't get the Avalon, but you might also look at something else. There was another one he had prior to this, a Kia Optima that was white. Oh, okay. And I really liked it, but he had oh, just Oh, okay. 
he sold it. Okay. Um, I liked the Avalon with the exception of that thing, that problem, which may be minor. And uh, I also feel there's a bluish green or blue green something. Also, maybe a Kia um, that he's going to show you. So the financing is going to be expensive. Oh, between um, my it, friend and yeah, it's it's doable. It's not impossible. It's just doable. So let's see what happens. We'll hold good thoughts for you. I think the friend is is anxious to help you. Um, Do you see what the payments would be? Do you have a figure? No, I'm just and just all I know is I know it's going to be expensive. It's another burden for you. Uh, but um, yeah, I've been with you will, a car you know, it's, you have to figure it out. You have to figure it out. I think you will be successful in figuring that out. Okay, and you think it could be September I'd get something? Yes. Okay, and one more thing. How's 2020 for me? Much Past better. Year has been shitty. <laughs> yeah, uh, for everybody um, is my unprofessional opinion. I have a lot of hope for 2020. I had no hope for 2019, and yeah, I had retired I thinking it to would improve, too. Yeah. Um, I, I just didn't see a lot of hope about anything. Um, but I feel much more confident about 2020. Uh, I don't know if there's astrological people out there who are going to correct me. That's okay. Because that's a, this is their thing, not mine. But I just feel more confident going into 2020 for a lot of people that I read for. Um, this has been a year, this seems like the year where you get stripped down, you know what I mean? Where everything unnecessary is kind of ripped away from you. Mm-hmm. And uh, it feels sometimes like the rug's been pulled out. But sometimes that's the best way to approach, you know, when you've got a clean canvas, you can you can build a new life. And I think that's what you need to take one step at a time. This is a new life for you coming. That's so my you feeling. do see the, me going through with the bypass surgery. Yes. Now, unless you change your mind. Um, but I think you're a candidate, and I think that you're going to like the people that you're dealing with and have confidence in them. Just remember, okay. this is a lifetime thing. It's just not just oh, surgery I and puff, I have okay? To. Um, and they're going to talk to you about that. So I wish you a lot of luck, and I feel good about it. Okay, our next – good luck to you, uh, Kathleen. Our next caller is uh, – let's see. Uh, let's see. Who do we have? Area code 917. Are you there, please? Hi, Carol Ann. This is Ellen. I am here, yes. Hi. Good to meet you. How are you? Terrific. Um, Thank you for asking. I was very impressed by your mediumship reading of the first caller. So I'd like to ask for one. Is it possible for you to talk to my mother and see if she could advise me on any of the situations going on in my life? Was this a lady that passed? Um, uh, I have. Let me tell you what I have instead of asking you. Okay. I have a lady with gray hair here in front of me. Mhm. Is that mom? Did mom have gray hair? That could be. Okay. Yes. And she said graying hair. Not she corrected me. It's not gray. She said it's graying. <laughs> yes. And she's remarking, and I feel that like there's darker hair mixed in there as well. And she's saying, all I have to do is think about it, and I, can, and I can get my natural hair color back. So she's amazed at what goes on on the other side. Okay. Um, I, she likes that. I mean, women are, you know, come on. We, we all want to look great, you know. And she says, I look good. I just want to let you know I look good. Mm-hmm. She is showing me that there was, uh, I feel there was an illness with her that kind of, you know, Maybe came on suddenly and then kind of just lingered, lingered. She, I get the word linger, and I, she's showing me her arm like she must have had some tubes going in there at one point. Yeah. Would that make yeah. sense? And she said, I'm so yes. glad that, like, she ripped, when she passed away, her spirit, like, ripped those out and off she went. And she said, I'm sorry to mm-hmm. leave you. Um, she's sharing something about cookies. Uh, I don't know why. I don't know if they have good cookies over there. Boy, I hope so. <laughs> and she's saying to you, 
uh, it is so lovely here. I feel a practical sense with this lady. Mm-hmm. Um, is there a practical as, uh, side to this, uh, to your mother? Oh, definitely, yes. Okay. And I feel like I want to talk about cookbooks for some reason. I don't know why, if it's you that have them or she has them, or if she's making fun of me, because I have some cookbooks here and I never look up a recipe. I don't know why I do that. Um, she's like, you can cook, but you don't, you don't use a recipe. You're right, ma'am. You're absolutely right. She's correcting me. Um Did you have some heartbreak this year? She's talking about a disappointment or a matter of the heart. Um, I would say disappointment. It wasn't a matter of the heart like a relationship, but disappointment, yes. Yes. Um, And the reason I'm bringing up the heart, not a romantic liaison that went bad, but I want to say disappointment that maybe hurt your heart. Or because she's showing me, she's saying, don't let it scar your heart. Don't take it to heart. Um, and I had read many times something very interesting about um, disappointment is our responsibility. You know, if we don't expect, uh, we're not disappointed. And I think that comes with a maturity I do it too. I get disappointed and then I'm like miserable or just, you know, just not happy. And I realize I put expectations out um, that Mm -hmm. I shouldn't have. So I think it makes us a little wiser. Uh, 2020 seems a lot brighter. And she is saying to me, I feel you in a social situation that has men and women in it. Would you understand that? Sounds more social. Nice. This could be where you live. It could be in a community thing. Um, did anybody play cards or bridge or something? Are you? Do you have any interest in that? Or you have someone in spirit who did? Uh, not that I can think of off the top of my head, no. Okay. That is around here, so I don't know if some people play bridge or somebody plays cards. But it's more of a companion friendship kind of group. Um, so I feel like a new set of friends or acquaintances and allow yourself to, um, you don't have to get to know them right away. Enjoy the journey is what I kind of get. Um, you don't have to size them up. I think that you're remarkable at sizing up people. Would that be true? I think I'm pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Put your skills to rest for a little bit. Let them show themselves to you. Anything you need to know about people is being sh- – they show you. Mm-hmm. It's not what they're saying. It's how they present themselves and what they do. Mm-hmm. And in a community-based thing or an organization, you get to see people, um, how they work with others, how, what they enjoy, how good they are at things. And I think this is going to unfold in front of you uh, with the new year. Your Mother is. Do I have a sister here somewhere? Um, her sisters. Yes, she had a few okay. sisters who both have. She's got like a gaggle over there. Yeah. Um, and she's enjoying herself. Somebody has wine. Did somebody drink wine over there? Or did uh-huh. somebody drink wine on the did. earthly plane? Yes. Okay. Good. Probably, we're having. Yes. We're having some wine. And you know what I like about this scene. It reminds me of a movie, and I think it was, um, uh, what's her name, Merle? No, you know, Yes, was in it. I feel like I'm in Tuscany or something. I feel like a, an outdoor courtyard your mother is presenting to me. And there's some, a gaggle of women, and there's some men as well. This must be what she's presenting as heaven, and there's definitely wine. So that gives us all hope, right, that there's definitely wine on the oh. other side. Thank God. Um, yes. And she is enjoying herself, and she says, you know, life is like a parade. Sometimes you just have to be the observer and not make a determination, um, she says, people change. She's, this is the advice that she's giving you about some disappointment. She's like, 
we we learn to let it go on the other side. She says it takes a little practice, but as she says, you're better off um, not dumping these people, but at least taking a step back and and welcoming new uh, new social people into your life. Does that sound better? Yes. Okay. 2020 is a much better. Um, I see a lot of pasta going on too. I don't know if that would be in your life or their life on the other side. I feel some dining out. I see clinking of glasses. So it might be like a dinner party group or something like that. You have a wealth of information. I feel that. Are you well read? Uh, and, and your mother says she's well read and intellectual. An intellectual. She doesn't really come off that way, but that's who you are. Would that make sense to you? Oh, well, that would be a nice way for my mother to characterize me. Yes, thank you. Yes, yeah, so she says um, you've got a lot going on for yourself. So she says, don't, don't um, think any nonsense. You know, move on. She says you're a great gal. Move on. And everybody's giving you, uh, lifting their glasses and doing a cheer. You know, cheers to you. So um, I have one more caller I have to get to. So I hope that answered your question. Twenty twenty is better for you. Your mom is uh, and her sisters are having delightful time, and they would like you to enjoy life. She goes, you know what? You just keep going till you run out of uh, until you run out of rope, almost. You know, till you <laughs> hit the end, till you get, till you hit the end of the line, and then it's over, and you have another life over here. So she said, it's Thank fabulous. You. Thank you, Carolyn. I appreciate the reading. You're welcome. Have a good evening. Uh, you too, oh my gosh. Thank you. Have a good night. Let's see. I didn't realize I had so many callers. I was leisurely doing my readings. Sorry. Uh, caller 347. 347, are you there, please? Hello? Hi. How can I help you? Oh, hi. My name is Keisha, and um, I just was calling to see what's coming up for me. Um, I'm open to, um, I guess, getting into a serious relationship and having kids. And um, on like new curry and moving and things like that. Where do I have a twin here? Are you, <coughs> excuse me, are you a Gemini? Or no. what's the twin? Who has a twin? My father's a twin. I would love oh, to okay. have twins if I had is he, kids. Is but he I'm a twin. Yes. Okay, then that's who I have here. Uh, that's how it works for me. It, they just kind of, like, jump in. As soon as you open your mouth, they jump in. It's like, hi, I've been waiting to talk to you. <coughs> I want to thank them for their patience. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, your father says to me, don't take this the wrong way. This is meant with a lot of love. He says, well, it's about time. I think he's talking about a relationship. Have you been without one for a while? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, so he's like, it's about time. I also see high heels for you. It's like it's time to slip on your slingbacks and stroll your stuff, is the way he puts it. Mm-hmm. Is there anybody smoking a cigar on the other side? A brother, your father, a, a brother of your father, a grandfather, anybody with cigars? No. Okay, I don't know why I have cigars here. Um, or if he's trying to present a place, but I'll put that on the side. It might be like Ybor City. It could be Cuba. It could be something like that. So I don't know what the cigar is. Um, I do feel, gentlemen, I feel uh, darker hair on this gentleman that you may meet, and I feel like it's kind of slicked back, unless that's your father. But I'm, I'm asking to be shown a gentleman. I feel like a white shirt kind of guy. Like a white long sleeve shirt. Casual. That might be my father. <laughs> okay. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. My father he wears looks hair like slick super back? fly. He, he looks exactly he, like Superfly if you've ever seen a movie. <laughs> that oh, with the hat one. and everything. Like, like looks like a pimp, light skin, long. I guess nice hair. <laughs> uh, shirt open. You know, he looks exactly like like when I see the saw the movie Superfly, it was like did my father. Oh, okay. Movie? They, no, they I don't twins. think. <laughs> no, I don't think so. The um, okay. what I'm seeing is a gentleman 
um, and I think it's in this in this lifetime here on the earth plane that as I'm only seeing the back, I don't know why they do this to me. Mm-hmm. I'm seeing either tanned or darker skinned gentleman. His neck is darker skinned. He has dark hair. His hair is slicked back in the back. He's wearing a white shirt, button down shirt, because I can see the sleeves and jeans or a khaki. He's put together. There's some gold on the wrist. Um, and I feel like a nice, uh, a global kind of feeling, an international kind of style with this guy. So, yes, there is gentlemen out there for you. Your father says, and for God's sake, don't settle. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Okay. That's what he says. And he says it's about time. Career and finances, yes. He says you've got to use everything you've got, and you have it. I feel like you've put your skills and uh, your life on the back burner or up on a shelf where it's dusty. Dust that stuff off and go at it. Do you have anything to do with illustration or children's books or anything like that? Or creative, artistic? Who is creative and artistic? Anybody that you know? I mean, I'm creative, but I just don't do anything with children. Children or children's books. Do you draw uh, or anything like that? No, I just do like chocolate. I'm learning cakes and stuff like that. Oh, okay. Okay, this may still apply to you. If you work for, if you are a cake decorator and get into that business, uh, there are specialty cakes like children's, like books or dogs or, you know what I'm saying, or Mm -hmm. teddy bears, this kind of stuff. It may have something to do with that Um, because what actually what I'm seeing is like a Harry Potter kind of theme and I'm seeing books. A cake, but they're books like slimmer books, green, blue, you know, piled up. And on the then there's a thicker one, and there are names in gold of the book, like it says Harry Potter on the top, and there's like a wand. So it could be this kind of creativity. Uh, I'm not saying mm-hmm. you're going to design cakes for kids' parties, but you never know. That's what I'm being shown, mm-hmm. um, and I'm seeing you being comfortable with someone and kicking your slingbacks off. Do you have any red shoes? No. You need a pair of red shoes, your father says. But, of course, we know how he dressed. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I might take that yes. with a great assault. <laughs> yeah. But he's showing me a nice pair of red slingbacks. And uh, he likes that. He thinks that's very sexy. He's like, come on, girl, you know what to do. It hasn't been that long. Uh, maybe it has been. But he's like, dust yourself off and go get it. Um, I see you being very fortunate. 2020 to 2022. Very nice period of your life. You just got to get out and get moving. So I'm going to leave you with that message, and I hope okay. everything goes well for you. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Uh, let me see. I don't know if I can squeeze one more in here or not. I have a lot of callers left. Let me do She goes, no, I can't squeeze any more in. Um, and the reason is she is the boss. She is my producer. That's Tiffany Michelle White, um, White Sage Woman, Reverend Tiffany Michelle White, and uh, she is our producer here on Goldilocks Productions, and she makes the calls. I only have 90 seconds, so I can't take another call, or she's telling me. Thank you all for calling in and allowing me to meet with your departed, and uh, I enjoy meeting people in spirit. They teach me a lot. And the one lady, I forget whose uh, relative that was, that was telling me that I do have some cookbooks that I do not look for, that I don't look at, but I have them. I do cook, but I don't always look at the cookbooks Um, just to get a sense of what what has to go in. And uh, they're reminding me to uh, look at the cookbook once in a while for extra ingredients. So I appreciate any advice that they give me. It's been a pleasure being on here in the Psychic Flow with you. Thank you so much for joining me tonight, and we will see you, uh, talk to you next week. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks to all our friends across the pond and in Canada and France and everywhere else that tunes in to listen to us. Thank you for joining us in the Psychic Flow. Good night.